What up y'all, it's Teacher, and today we're gonna be talking about a really crazy idea for Pokemon Legend ZA. Now, these videos I'm recording in succession, so this kind of builds off the last one where I was talking about just what is happening in Pokemon Legend ZA. I'm gonna summarize it, you can watch it after this, but it's pretty much that. You know the Kalos War that happened? Is that it happened within itself. It was Kalos versus Kalos, some kind of Kalos Civil War. And that the opposite side was actually something pretty technologically advanced versus AZ side. And that this is why something like the ultimate weapon, which doesn't make sense, just comes out of nowhere. A machine that just blows up everything. That AZ got that from the other side and is some kind of prototype that attests to the technology they have there. And so this is an actual theme in the game and that's why the logos, they look like that. Zygarde and then the ultimate weapon, a core piece of the logo. So that's the idea we're building off, right? And then we got into talking about just what the other side might have done which is with their technology made something along the lines of artificial pokemon which i know it sounds crazy at first but it definitely sounds like something that's possible and so the idea is that while we have our organic pokemon fighting the war on this side and while they also have organic pokemon fighting the war that there's a second layer right so th this because i've thought a bit about this so you see in the depiction here you got like Rhydon's. the two sides are fighting in its normal pokemon but remember there's a there probably is a layer behind this, which is on our side, we were probably using Mega Evolution, but that's not showing there, but we probably were using Mega Evolution. And so the other layer not showing is what they were using on the other side, which would be these kind of artificial Pokemon. And so while we're having fun with the idea that there could be these synthetic Pokemon made to counterpart Xerneas, Evolta, and Zygarde, because we don't know where they were 3000 years ago, only that somehow their energy ended up in the ultimate weapon which is curious right it means not only were they lingering somewhere but however az got the weapon and whatever technology went into it it was able to and understood and had the capability to use zygarde or at least evolve and journey's power so that's a topic for another video which oh, we have so much to talk about but we're talking about the synthetics now so you see how scarlet and violet introduced well let's go back to sun and moon they introduced variants. Then in Galar, they introduced variants along with the variants evolving. So Pokemon always one up on themselves, uh, introducing something new each time. Then we go to Scarlet and Violet, where they one up themselves twice. Along with the variants slash variants that could evolve, they introduced two things, which was regional fakes, it doesn't have an official name, which is just like a side branch for these look-alike Pokemon, as well as like a legendary class of regional variants called paradox pokemon this is the key here this is also something they did in sun and moon right they introduced the class of these super pokemon which was the ultra beast they're essentially legendary so you have the ultra beasts in gen 7 you have the paradox pokemon in gen 9 i'm saying in this i guess this counts as gen 9 as well in this game here's my idea they're gonna introduce something called synthetic variants which is gonna essentially be Pokemon that were made a long time ago, or at least the blueprints for them exists. And they are based off the other side of Kalos that had this technology. These would be Pokemon that have been enhanced to bring out lost capabilities in their genes, their, their full potential. They're not robotic looking Pokemon. By synthetic, it's in the vein of Mewtwo what these pokemon would be called they might be called the same thing so let's just pretend a synthetic all right let's use the kalos trio okay greninja chestnut and delphox which bro that's another video we got to talk about the starters for these games all right write that down we'll get to it i already have some in mind of what's probably gonna happen there but let's use greninja delphox and chestnut just for example let's say the opposite side has synthetic super enhanced versions of them so their stats would be buffed they would be more like paradox pokemon in terms of stats rather than the regional variants you know regional variants have the same distribution they same base that total but it would be legendary class and a super edition maybe <laughs> you'll see where i'm going with this maybe he'd have giant permanent um shields on he'd have this giant protection it would maximize chestnut's capability for defense greninja might be more nimble delphox might finally get the freaking stick back it would be these super versions of these pokemon so yeah it could be called still just chestnut froakie and delphox but i suppose it'd be more fun if they went with the code name approach so you know how you have like ub01 nihi lego in the same way they'd have code names either like the ultra beast like sg01 
you can name it like that or you give them some fancy names like the paradox pokemon pokemon's getting so weird and digimon like they could even be just called like s greninja and remember this is just the theory that the theme of this game might be the organic side versus this artificial say synthetic it sounds cooler when you say synthetic versus synthetic side and this is when we get to the next layer of this which is that remember see i've been thinking about this remember how i just said somehow the weapon az had it was able to wield zernis nivolto's power which we talked in the last video how ridiculous it sounds that az pulled up in a fully natural war with the rocket launcher right it's already out of the blue but this weapon was able to harness zernis nivolto's power which shows whoever was making the weapon was already diving in that and then we also know this weapon appears to be what made the megastones this is when we get to the second version of this, which is at, which is that what the Megastones are, are synthetic enhancements specifically made. You know, we no one knows where Megastones came from. Game Freak didn't get a chance to explain. They kind of just rained from the sky, which is what it sounds like, especially after you and Auras do the Rayquaza event. More right, Megastones rain from the sky for the post game and you can collect them. That's not what happened. I mean, that's the general story right now, but I'm saying... That can't be what happened. Because, like, a Blastoise tonight is so specific. It's not even like it has an affinity with Water-type Pokemon, and so it works for Blastoise. It's specifically called the Blastoise tonight. It's almost like, a long time ago, these soup, these the technological side of this Kalos War, the, they're half of the people, that AZ blew up, so all their technology is lost now. They're the ones who made the Megastones. As, like, a second-hand version of what the synthetic pokemon are so you have these synthetic pokemon that would be an upgraded chestnut and all but the secondary version they invented was a stone that if you can synchronize with the original pokemon it can bring out that our similar version of that potential second hand maybe that's what this game is going to explain the mega stones are and so the reason they all appeared as soon as the ultimate weapon is used is because the ultimate weapon however az got or not i know the game's the game says he made the machine i don't know did they ever say he had an engineering i'm not gonna say a degree but or is az in some weird way from the other side and that's how he was able to go to the other side and get the ultimate weapon something like that right but imagine the ultimate weapon it contains the technology from the other side that when he used it maybe you know what makes sense let's say az this is crazy speculation but this is kind of fun let's say az is from the other side originally right and so when the war got hectic and his flow it died that he gave in and he went back to his original side maybe he left because he didn't like all the synthetic stuff happening so he goes back to their side and takes maybe the ultimate weapon isn't some prototype because that's how it's kind of wording in the last video because it's so machine like even though if you actually look at it it's kind of crystally right it's not as machine like as it looks in the story but i was looking at it as the prototype last time but what if it's actually their ultimate like as the name suggests like their actual prize creation so when he took that it had like a bunch of some of the stuff they were working on in terms of these synthetic experiments and the orbs they're trying to make that when he uses it it blasts the megastone all over the place and so if you take like one of the orbs that you'll call the blastoise tonight after it's because they made that specifically for blastoise to this day no one can explain where megastones come from and it, you can't deny the fact that it's so specific to each Pokemon to an extent that it makes no sense. Like, the Blastoise tonight doesn't even work for, like, War Turtle. Not that we want it to, but think about it. Think about it like this. You know the same way any Pokemon can use a Z-Move? You could have made it so when, when the pre-evolutions to these Pokemon use it, they just get a certain boost to show they're compatible with it generally. But Blastoise is just super compatible. You see, it's like the Megastones were made specifically for these Pokemon. Maybe the synthetic Pokemon came first as an experiment on how to enhance Pokemon and the Megastones is actually the better creation because it's a more controlled version. But it explains, right? Mega Evolution is very specific, at least the way I see it, right? I explained in the previous video that it has like this corrupted notation to it where it kind of messes up some Pokemon. But you know, think about, see if you can follow this thought pattern, right? Think about how a Mega Evolution it kind of puts a Pokemon to fit a certain template. So use it on Charizard. It's not like Charizard just randomly is forced to rapidly evolve. It's like Charizard is given a specific direction to evolve in, right? So especially think of Charizard 
the Megastone Y and X, it's like it was very specifically made for it. And so it's like an upgrade compared to the synthetic idea, you know, which I'm just pretending they exist now, the synthetic Pokemon, where you can control it better with the Mega Stones. That might have been their better invention. And then in this game, they'll reveal what the Mega, the Keystones really are. As weird as all this sounds, there is some weird technological side to all of Pokemon X and Y. And yeah, you got stuff like Corina's gym and all where they worship Megastones and it's this tradition, but the origin to it remains unknown to this day. And the closest idea we have is somehow they're linked to Xerneas Nivelto's energy. How complete is that info? It is a dead end. Game Freak has not actually explained what they are. And then we get to Mewtwo, right? You know, I could save this for another video, but I'm just gonna talk about it here. Mewtwo is a crazy topic because it kind of sounds like this, right? Mewtwo obviously didn't exist back then, so this is what it sounds like. Mewtwo escapes the red and blue days, and he's hanging out here in uh, Kalos now, and someone, which is a mystery, they're gonna have to explain this in this game, because it's officially coming, X and Y is continuing now, right, the lore? Someone must have found Mewtwo, and this is someone who somehow has, like, lost blueprints and stuff about that lost Kalosian technology that they made, because Mewtwo's already a synthetic Pokemon, they were very easily able to make Mega Stones it was compatible with. That must have been what happened. And so, think about how weird it is Mewtwo has Mega Stones. That might be the little key they left behind, that everything that you saw with X and Y is about synthetic enhancements. The fact that Mewtwo, they left in there that he has Mega Stones. They did it to make more money, because Mewtwo sells and Charizard sells, but they also did it to leave in a clue that to ask us, right? Why does Mewtwo have two Mega Stones? Where did they come from? Anyhow, y'all let me know your thoughts in the comments. There is, I wanna end this video saying this, there is a Pokemon, I'm gonna talk about this in the next video, that might be synthetic under our nose the entire time. It's not Mewtwo. It is their greatest synthetic mon, and it's a Pokemon that exists right now. See if y'all can guess what it is in the comments. That's the topic for the next video. Unless I want to talk about the stars before then. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you know what Pokemon I'm talking about. And it's not a nasty, like a useless Pokemon or a Pokemon you don't care about. It's kind of the last Pokemon you would have, would have expected. But I think this is the case. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.